One issue here is in terms of maximizing stockholder wealth. Remember, this is an important issue right here. All right, we have to pay attention to if you expect the firm to live into the future, then we have to discount this. So that's important idea there. It's the lifetime of dividends or return or shareholder wealth. All right. Now, two things I want to end up with. Talk about a sort of a preview of where we're going. Since there's so much debate that goes on about is there uh, truly profit maximizing going on, then some other alternatives have been introduced. Here's one called market value added. And notice right here, this means it's copyrighted. But what this actually is is the difference between the market value of the company and the capital that investors have paid into the company. Now, one of the things that is of interest here is we have to be careful about what I call holding market value. Oftentimes, the market value or the book value of your company goes up because of inflation. You didn't do anything to cost that to go up. It was inflation. So market value added might actually go up. So what you want to pay attention to here is if you're going to use this idea between capital and then the market value of the company, don't use it in the context of what we call holding. When you're measuring that market value, it's the market value that results by decisions made by you as a manager or made by your company. Not simply because everybody in the, in, in the marketplace got 5%. Okay? That has nothing to do with your managerial abilities. All right. Now, this last one, notice it is also, this, it is also trademarked, all right? There's a very popular idea, economic value added. And again, why are we looking at these notions? We're looking at these notions because there is this debate about do firms maximize profits or do they not maximize profits have led to economic value added. And basic difference between, so watch, it's two ideas. Return on capital minus the cost of capital times the total amount of capital. Okay. So these are two very popular ways, at least in the United States, to get around this uh, whole question of what is it that the firm is attempting to maximize. Okay? Well, by way of introduction, that's what I wanted to say. Next time, when we're together, we're going to look at supply uh, and demand. Now. Also, what I'm going to try to do throughout our time together, uh, bring in some problems, talk about real-world problems, and then use our theory uh, to see what kind of insights we can gain uh, from looking at real-world problems and, and try to make as much application to the real world as we can. So I think we're going to have fun together, and I will see you when you put the next disc in, and we'll be talking about supply and demand.